course, most of you know by now the biggest Yes song of all time, their only number one, was Owner of a Lonely Heart. But Yes was more or less an album tracks FM kind of band for the most part. But when Yes broke up, Trevor Rabin was supposed to come into the fold and basically form a new band. There are two versions of this story. There's a version where Chris Squire, Alan White, Tony Kay were going to form this band called Cinema. And the other version is it was always going to be Yes all along. Trevor takes the former version. Even though the album that Owner of a Lonely Heart is taken from, 90125, was also a huge hit, there were tensions in the band. For instance, keyboardist Tony Kay is not in the video of Owner of a Lonely Heart. We also talked to Trevor about the best piece of musical advice he ever got and songwriting credits of Owner of a Lonely Heart. I mean, the story always goes that Trevor Rabin brought that song in, finished And another version says, almost finished. He talks about that in this clip on Rock History Music. Enjoy. Tony Kay was in the band, obviously, but he'd had problems with Trevor Horn during the recording. So I landed up doing all the keyboards, and he came back to L.A. And once he was in L.A., he was kind of annoyed. It was him and Trevor Horn just couldn't uh, work see eye to eye. And when I got back to L.A., I immediately called him and said, hey, man, Come back to the band. He said, no, I've been treated badly. I said, come on. You know, it's it's all over. And he's back in the band. But Oh, uh, getting back to Owner of a Lonely Heart, I didn't ask you last time. What part, I mean, you brought that song in. Wasn't it almost finished? And what part did the other guys do to, to get songwriting credits? I'm just curious. Well, in, in those, a lot of the songwriting credits are about guys getting all together and, and uh, me saying, well, that's my song. And them saying, well, yeah, but you're in a band now. She has share, buddy, until it's their song, right? So, um, but in in fairness, Chris came up with part of the uh, the kind of Motowny part in there. Uh, it was more a jam than anything, but Chris had come up with that riff, and I said oh, that will that'll fit nicely into the song. And and then for the rest of it, it was pretty much set and done and that's why you know during in the chorus i sing the lead in the chorus because we just left what was there what's the best piece of musical advice you ever received um i think the best advice was from my dad who said if you're going to be a soloist learn everything you you possibly can and you'll make sure your technique is proficient but make sure you are you um have it because if you don't have your own style you just play toxic i love yeah. talk I, I just like that i just love that song that you know it's funny that song came you know it was the dun, 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 a great groove right and that, that's going and and i thought shit i just i'm just gonna play on this and i started playing some solos i got a, a, a guitar sound and i just started playing and and uh, this, it went on for, I mean, there's, there's a version of it that doesn't have the verse on it. It's just guitar solo for like three minutes. I've, I've got to find it. Um, but then I started editing, you know, the producer cap, and I started editing it. And, um, and then it became the song. And I thought, okay, when it goes into the verse, it's, it's got to go into something completely nuts. I don't want to just carry on with the doom, do doom, do doom, do doom. So that's kind of where it came from. Then I thought, you know, I just finished doing the song um, Tumbleweed, which had all these jazz vocals in in the beginning. And I thought, I want to do something that has those kind of chords in the verse, but against this raucous kind of drum sound and stuff. So, And then the chorus was like, what what is this going to be? And I started playing this chorus vibe, and I thought, "Ah, it's very ZZ Top. You know, I don't know if that's going to, I thought, this shit, you know, this this is kind of cool. And I start, stuck it all together and then started working on it. A lot of different things. There's a, the, it, This is like a smorgasbord for Trevor Raven fans. Yeah, you know, I wanted to go to all kinds of different areas. I mean, uh, one of the uh, working titles was Demographic Nightmare because, you know, you go to country and then you go to a song like Tears, which is a melancholy, sad love song. So there's many, many different musical areas, but, you know, with putting my producer cap on, I always thought it didn't really matter because at the end of the day, 
um, my voice is my voice, and my guitar style, whatever that is, is should unite all the songs to sound like it's from the same record. And when I finished scheduling it, I thought, oh no, I'm, I'm kind of happy with what it does, and and the, you know the surprises from one thing to the next. Trevor Rabin's brand new album is called Rio. Uh, he hasn't released a vocal album in a gazillion years, but he put a lot of work into this. A lot of great guitars. First, we talked to Trevor on the phone, and then. Well, the promotions company said, let's give him another interview. They liked our work, so we got a chance to talk to Trevor on video. And that was just sensational. But he's really proud of this, and he really should be, because there's not a bad track on it, first of all. He gets a little political sometimes, talking about the state of the world. But I highly recommend Rio. Again, links in the description if you want to pick it up. Make sure you comment on our videos. We read all the comments. Share our videos on social media. Subscribe to our channel and like our videos as well. Remember, you can make a donation to our channel. At the very top of the description, there's a PayPal link where you can make a donation or join our Patreon where you get early access to all our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take good care of yourself.